Welcome everybody to our first Athena session. Um, thank you to our producer who chose amazing music while we were waiting for you all to join. I can see our chat is on fire. Um, Italy, Nepal, Nigeria, Uruguay. Hey guys, thank you so much for joining us. My name is Celeste Bono and I will be your host for today's session. Um, this is our first session. So we welcome you all on behalf of Athena. And uh, some of you may be aware, Athena is a global talent platform and our purpose is to help spread opportunities around the world by creating sustainable ecosystem of talent to connect companies and job seekers. Um, we have created this session uh, to share information, opinions, and lots, lots more. But first things first, what are the Athena sessions? So uh, this session, on this session, we are going to be live and it, it's a live online round table where we will dive deep into our super, you know, exciting topics and try to inspire you to make your next career move, hopefully, with epic speakers, um, Q and A session and a vibrant virtual community. So. <laughs> We hope that you'll walk away filled with actionable insights for your professional path. So beginning with this session, um, I would like to introduce to all of you our first uh, guest speaker, Kevin Kirkpatrick. Hi, Kevin. As, um, Kevin is the CEO of WeWork Remotely, uh, one of the largest remote work communities in the world. Besides that, uh, Kevin is a serial entrepreneur founding not just one, but two companies Welcome, Kevin. Thank you so much for joining us. I don't know if you want to introduce yourself to the crowd. Yeah, thanks, everyone. Uh, excited to have a conversation with you all today and, and get to hear your questions. Awesome. Thank you. So our second guest is Autumn Huffman, head of career services at Microverse. Hey, Autumn. Hey, <laughs> he comes with a wealth of experience and insight into the challenges and um, trends that graduates are facing when looking to join the remote work course, I guess. Hey, do you want to introduce yourself, Autumn? Uh, hello, I'm Autumn Muffin. Like she said, I work uh, with Microverse as the head of career services, and I'm excited to talk to y'all. Though I am sad Augustine and Kevin didn't give me the CEO black t-shirt memo. <laughs> Maybe next time I'll that. come in the proper attire, huh? I, I promise we didn't plan that. We did not email them before to tell them to wear black. Just, yeah, we did uh, thank you so much for being here, Autumn. And last but not least, uh, the other CEO wearing black uh, is Agustin Cabrissasi, co-founder and CEO of Anyone AI, an amazing company investing in talent from Latin America to bridge the talent gap in AI. Hmm. Agustin, hi. How are you? Hi, Madri. Thank you for having me today. Thank you, Celeste, for the introduction. Very, no. very happy to be here thank today. You. Thank you so much. Well, first of all, guys, I think it's um, wise to let everyone know how to uh, the structure of this uh, first Athena session is going to be. So this will be, as we said before, an online roundtable. We can all see each other, and uh, during the whole time, everyone will be muted, um, obviously. So uh, yeah, sorry, don't take it personal. You're gonna be able. You're gonna have your chance to ask questions later. Um, but the chats will be open. I can see that, as I said before, it's on fire and only the guest speakers and I will be unmuted. But we will be, you know, reading all your comments and, and questions here on Zoom and on YouTube because we're also, you know, streaming live over there. Um, after our guests uh, give all of their points of view on the topics, uh, everything will be answered in the last 10 minutes of our session. So, hopefully everything will run smoothly. So guys, again, thank you so much for joining us. And without further ado, let me start with the first question, Kevin. Um, I'm going for you. So what's really a remote job, Kevin? Is it is it working from the beach or working from home or perhaps working for someone abroad? What, what would you say it, it is? So uh, the short answer is yes, it, it can be working from from the beach for sure. That can that can certainly be a part of it, or um, a way in which you uh, uh, work when you're at your remote job, possibly. Um, but I would say in most cases, and kind of in a broader definitional sense, it might be just working outside of like a central uh, shared location. That could be an office. That could also be something more informal, maybe a 
kind of co-working space, even to a degree. Uh, but that, you know, definitionally is how I would think about it. And there's kind of lots of ways that we are not only defining it as it's been, but as it continues to evolve going forward. I think it's evolved from maybe the early days of what we would call kind of telecommuting, possibly, and moved more into a more thoughtful kind of way to interact not just with work, but your own life and how to fit these two worlds together. Mm -hmm. Okay, so is it okay if I work from the beach then? As long you as know, in my opinion, it is. Yes, at our company, it absolutely is, as you might guess. <laughs> awesome. Agustin, what do you think about that? What, what is it for you nowadays? What is re remote work? Absolutely. I think I 100% agree with Kevin. Uh, in my case, you know, we are bringing uh, developers from LATAM to, you know, other mainstream areas like, you know, the US or Europe or, or some other countries in, in LATAM as well. But we really don't care where the developer is based. Uh, we want to connect them with the best, uh, you know, opportunity uh, based, of course, in their uh, profile and what the company is looking for. Um, so I think it opens up a lot of opportunities and benefits for both uh, the company and the developer. Um, and now company, companies are not just um, restricted to look for, you know, talent they can hire just in, you know, San Francisco or, or LA or New York, but now they have, you know, much more opportunity and, and diversity when it comes to finding talent uh, in abroad. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Thank you. Adam, what do, what do you think about that? <laughs> Yeah, I uh, really love this this word opportunity. Um, to me, remote work is a, a a fairly radical idea that people should be able to have the flexibility that they need to make work work for them. Uh, uh, you know, I do have coworkers who, you know, all of their belongings are in a storage unit somewhere, and they are like three weeks keto two weeks Nepal, three weeks Barcelona. Uh, but, you know, most of the people I know who do remote work are, you know, parents who are trying to, you know, manage the split responsibilities, people who like to do their laundry in between meetings, people who like to use their meeting time in really deliberate, intentional, collaborative ways, and people like me who like to do these calls and they're bunny slippers. So uh, I guess it's uh, it takes many forms, as Kevin says, you know, um, and, the, you know, but they all offer uh, uh, an escape from this traditional uh, all in one space all the time kind of uh, work option. So. Yeah, and that is awesome. I, ca I can also say that we have a couple of colleagues that are also doing that, like one uh, week they're in Egypt and the next one they are in, I don't know, like Zimbabwe. And, and it's amazing. I, I, I'm, I'm glad we, we shared that. So guys, can anyone really land a remote job or like, is it, is it really that easy? Austin, do you want to? Yeah, happy to answer. So yeah, so we have in, in our program um, career coaches, right? And what we uh, typically explain everybody that it's, you know, about to look for their either their, their next opportunity or, or, you know, just their first job, in our case in, in AI, right? Uh, we explain them, uh, it's a numbers game. Um, it's really, uh, it's just like you, uh, you know, are going after a sales process or an investment process. You just, you just need to start, you know, applying. And, and we are seeing even uh, uh, worse numbers when it comes to look for remote jobs. And that's because you have so many opportunities that if you don't start applying, you know, massively, your chances of success, you know, really decrease. Um, so we have, you know, brought some numbers here to, to share with the audience that, you know, we explain um, every fellow in our program that if they want to land two or three job offers at the end of the process, they need to start to at least 200 uh, uh, applications. Uh, in, and, and of course, you know, there are different um, rates in, 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 the, in the process uh, between, you know, for the, from the time you apply to, to the, the, the moment you, you get your offer. So really, uh, you know, remote, uh, uh, you know, landing remote jobs, uh, it's uh, of course, uh, as every, every other process when, when you look for a job, but probably numbers are much more massive when it comes to, you know, applying. And, and that's because of the, you know, to my previous point, the amount of applicants that you, you're gonna have 
uh, you know, globally for, for one position. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. Kevin, what do you think about it? Can you, can anyone land it really? I, I mean, I, I totally agree with what uh, Augustine said in terms of, um, you know, just that it ends up being a lot of a numbers game. And I think absolutely anyone can. I think a lot of it comes down to kind of um, not only your experience, but your approach to it, as Augustine was hinting at, you know, having a process and, and, and just kind of being consistent because as remote work over the last, you know, let's say two to four years has been more prolific, it also means that there are more people applying to these jobs than ever before. And also the market for them has really, it, it has changed and it's continuing to change. There's still, you know, for as great as we all, I think probably uh, on this call, believe remote really is amazing and such a great opportunity and opens so many doors for people. There, it, it doesn't mean that there's not pushback, you know, across different industries and different companies, and there's still some resistance there. So a lot of it comes down to you being persistent, finding companies that, you know, really do truly support it, understanding how they support it. You know, is it sort of like a box that they check where they say like, yeah, you can technically work remote, but, you know, we've heard stories of people saying our company's remote, but it's only remote within our state, for example, which is like kind of not remote fully in our opinion, or it's just a different version of remote. And so even as you think about applying for these jobs and deciding, you know, figuring out if you can land that job is what are your requirements? What does remote mean to you and what matters there? Because again, it's not a one size fits all. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Autumn. Hi. <laughs> uh, I think I would add to this by zooming out a little bit. Um, you know, while uh, one of the things I'm passionate about and, and one of the reasons I work at Microverse, because it's one of their um, sort of inbound passions as well, is that opportunity should be for everyone. There are talented people all over the place and people from, you know, the global south should have um, equal access to opportunities in the, the global north where a lot of these like uh, you know, technical producers are located. And that's something we're very excited about. But, um, you know, it is, uh, you know, we're still have a lot of work to do. Yes, post COVID, there are a lot more remote opportunities, even globally distributed remote communities, but they still prize English as a working language for the most part. Um, you know, infrastructure, do you have reliable access to internet and electricity? Does this rainy season take out your internet and your area. You know, uh, there are definitely lots of strategies that can be employed. You you know, for every problem, there are uh, ways to overcome that barrier. But I mean, I, I think it might be a little optimistic to say at this time, anyone and everyone can, can get involved in remote work. It is still clustered around a certain set of privileges, uh, as particularly those of infrastructure. Uh, but I think that the world is growing more and more in that direction every single day. And it is the people that have these conversations that lead these charges. Like I was very excited to, to see you on here, Kevin. We work remotely is one of the places we push our students to apply. You know, uh, we're seeing more like distributed efforts towards creating these kinds of workspaces in a more equitable, fair way. It's not just people in California telecommuting to people in New York. You know, there's a, a big world out there and lots of talent. So yeah, I mean, anybody can get the job, but some folks might have to be more persistent and have different struggles to overcome. And and I don't, what do you think um, the hot roles are nowadays? Like, do you, any idea that those sure. could be right uh, now? So there are still a handful of jobs that have always been leading pioneers yeah. in remote work um, that are still... I mean, customer service jobs are still often remote, like uh, certain kinds of tutoring, certain kinds of transcriptions, certain kinds of um, uh, sales jobs will always have a place in remote work. Anybody who has a regional territory will always have a place for remote work. But what we're seeing in a post-COVID sphere is a lot more uh analyst type jobs. So these used to be very come to the office, wear a suit kind of jobs, these kind of white collar work options, whether it be like data, data analysts or financial analysts. And then another big one, of course, 
um, is in the tech sector, especially with software development or cybersecurity, though I will say there is still a remarkable amount of uh, opportunity for people who are further in their careers uh, in the tech sector than those who are um, perhaps more junior or starting out. Um, there's still kind of a, a pay your dues uh, in the office thing that happens, not everywhere, but, you know, as a trend, certainly. Mm -hmm. Kev, what are, what's your experience with that? What, 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 the, what are the hot roles for you guys? Yeah, I, mean, I think, I think Autumn nailed it, um, in, in terms of, you know, what we're seeing, I think we're kind of in like, um, you know, you could think of it as the maybe first or second wave of remote work, you know, you might think of the second of telecommuting for the last 20 plus years has kind of been the first, um, where the the third, I think, is going to be taking more of these maybe traditionally in person, maybe industrialized, maybe trade roles. And as technology kind of levels up into those particular spheres, we will see a new kind of additional layer on top instead of it just being what we might currently call like knowledge work, right? So analyst work or, you know, again, things like customer success or engineering or, um, you know, design, all of those will continue to expand, but I think they'll bridge more into the spaces that we're not currently even thinking about as remote work. So whether that's, you know, I don't know, healthcare, again, particular trades, I think we'll see a bridge start to slowly be built, but that's, we're not quite there yet. And I, I think it'll be, that'll be the, the big unlocking mechanism for actually the previous question of who can work remotely and who can get these jobs is we have to build that bridge. We have to set up the infrastructure and then it will truly be anyone can have these jobs. Right. Yeah, absolutely. I was seeing, is it any different from uh, Latin America with what the guys are saying with those hot rolls and no, I definitely agree. I, I can speak more on the on the um, data side, the AI, AI side of things, uh, but definitely like we expect, uh, I think the, the trend is like for the next five to six years, there's going to be 11 million jobs uh, just in the US in, in data. Uh, so, and, you know, majority of them uh, being re remote. Um, so definitely, you know, IT is, is leading, uh, uh, you know, uh, Autumn and, and Kevin were talking about other more traditional, um, you know, uh, jobs that definitely will have to, to catch up with the trend. But, uh, you know, when it comes to, you know, data, of course, uh, full stack engineers, backend engineers, uh, we see a lot of opportunity there. So definitely that's the, the way to, to get in. 11 million, you said, only in the U.S.? Only in the U.S., just in the U.S. <laughs> okay, numbers game. <laughs> I don't, um, this is, this is, I think this, I mean, this question is for everyone, obviously, but I, I want to start with you. Uh, what do you think some uh, of the challenges that uh, talent might face while, while looking for a remote job? Yeah, sure. That's a, a really great question. So, um, Working remotely is not identical to working in person. Uh, I know that many of us screen for folks who like uh, can be very collaborative in a deliberate way. Um, you know, that old saying, this meeting could have been an email. That is not yes. something that people are interested in in a remote <laughs> sphere. Uh, people are starting, it's almost gone um, back in time, old fashioned in terms of uh, how well written is your email to the hiring manager? Uh, we want to know that you're a good communicator. So a lot of these kinds of things um, are kind of taking more precedence. And then also you have to think a lot of these jobs, particularly globally distributed ones, are um, prize a lot of asynchronicity, which is its own set of skills. So I, the career coach in me, if you are interested, please do not assume all remote work is the same. Do your research on that company. Uh, if they're async, they are screening you for the way you solve problems and how independent you are and how you can use tools. That's the other piece. Um, you can expect your remote work experience to be about some tools, girl. Like it's, uh, what's your collaboration tool? Are you on Teams? Are you on Skype? What, or, you know, are you on, um, you know, do you use Notion? Do you use, you know, there's all these different kind of ways that you can create that uh, whiteboard experience in a traditional meeting, but um, they kind of just expect you to know what those are and be ready to use them. So I would definitely look into some of the, 
most popular ones. And then I think the last piece is um, the leading pioneers right now in terms of global work opportunity um, for anyone and everyone are, are still startups. Um, uh, startups are very uh, willing to <laughs> like make those cultural choices uh, and not be kind of um, hamstrung to an older way of doing work. But I promise you they're going to screen you for if you have ever worked in a startup. It is it is a busy, fast paced, pivot heavy environment. <laughs> So uh, I would definitely uh, be prepared to speak that language as well. I would say those are the biggest um, barriers. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, what do you think? Do you guys, is that any different and we work remotely, the challenges that tell my face or but is it is it pretty much the same or any? No, I think, I mean, I think those are were super important, especially that last point of just knowing, like uh, I was saying, in, in terms of, remote culture um there is a lot more nuance uh than there kind of maybe is in, in what we might think of as traditional office culture i think um you know even you take the big companies let's say you know the fangs for example in tech and their remote their version of remote is from one to the next completely different uh, you know and even within that company every team has a different version of that every team might have a different tool stack even um and so what you're going to find is like the, the barriers for entry are, they kind of go up in terms of getting your, you know, getting your foot in the door and kind of getting your place and, and you know, getting through these, whether it's an ATS system or just screening through a recruiter or hiring manager, that process can be very, it can be long, it can be a little bit more difficult than, you know, maybe a traditional interview flow. And in, in a good way, I think it actually is, um, it, it gives us more time to kind of think about how we communicate. Um, through that process for candidates as well. I think both sides can benefit. You have to kind of be prepared for a different process. And so one of the big challenges is just being prepared for that process. So kind of being ready to like have not only interview prep, like you might normally have in, you know, that process, but also thinking about answering questions, you know, like Autumn was alluding to of how to use tools. They might even have you, you know, run tests on, hey, you know, we're going to collaborate in Slack for a week and just see how that goes. Or we're going to bring you into this notion doc and like, Hey, can you do this practice test or whatever? And so your familiarity and skill set there are all going to be, you know, challenged a lot faster than again, in kind of a normal hiring process. Right. Right. I was seeing, is that, is that different Latin America for, for us guys that we're in Latin? No, no, definitely. I think, uh, you know, in, in line with what Kevin said and Autumn, uh, you know, two two main ones I'd like to mention. Uh, definitely uh, rejection, right? Uh, being, um, you know, you need to support that. Uh, we we always, you know, tell our, our fellows in our programs, uh, failure is part of the process, right? So you're probably gonna get, you know, no response, no response. Uh, thank you, but not a good feed uh, until you get one meeting. Then you don't go to the next interview, but you better prepare for the next stage. Then you go to the technical interview, maybe you don't pass, but you have another one coming and you learn from that <laughs> yeah. like until you land the job, right? So it's definitely being prepared to be rejected. Um, and you know, going back to the numbers, you need to have, you know, the you need to be in a good mood to you know apply and 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 get um you know um, those rejections, but learn from the process until you you get uh to, to the point you want to get. And the second one, uh, it's probably uh, when it comes to entry level uh, profiles, so we have all, all levels of seniority in our program, but uh, you know we have some entry level uh, profiles, and getting the first job uh, is really hard. Uh, it it's probably takes two or three times the effort that it's going to take for anybody with two or three years of experience to to get a, a new position. Um, so we try to, you know, stay on top of them, you know, coach them and, and, you know, bring them opportunities so they can, you know, pass that first, uh, hurdle, which is getting the first job. And once you get it, you know, if you're in IT, you are in programming, uh, you, you're going to start growing exponentially. So it's really, you know, you, you need to learn that's part of the process. And, and like I said before, failure is just, uh, you know, one step, uh, and if you don't fail, you're going to, you're going to not be able to land your, your job. And, and, and what do you think, uh, you know, our skills are the ones that 
I mean, what are those, the ones that you look for in a remote position or where they should be? And how can, you know, how can talent or your talent and your experience, how can they develop them? Yeah, of course, English, uh, it's, you know, something you, you have to, to polish and practice and, and be good at if you're going to look for, you know, remote positions that are not your, your native uh you know, language, but you can also work remotely and you can work from Argentina for a company in Mexico or in Brazil. So, um, you know, uh, of course, English, if you're going to look for US or other countries, uh, but then the ability to work independently is very important. You're going to be working remotely, alone, at home. Um, so you need to be able to manage yourself. Uh, that's really, really important. And then third, I would say time management skills. Um, and, and finding a good uh, work-life balance because what happens, uh, I personally have been working from home for probably three or four years, but it takes a lot of time to learn that after you know 6, 7 p.m., you need to go and do something else because you're at home, you're at your desk, and it's like never ending, right? right so all of a sudden you realize that you've been in front of the screen for 12 hours and you, you didn't have lunch, you didn't have a, even a cup of tea, let alone dinner. Yeah, absolutely. Correct, correct. So I would say those are probably the top ones that comes to my mind. Yeah, um, so what comes to your mind, Autumn, with, with the ones that you look for in a remote uh, position, those skills are? Well, first, I just want to echo everything Augustine said. I mean, absolutely. Uh, uh, I think additionally, though, um, you know, my company is remote first and globally distributed. So when we screen for talent, we want to look for like global citizens, people who have exposure to like other cultures, other ways of being, um, because, you know, Culture is so ingrained in each and every one of us, you become blind to what's normal to you. Uh, and then when you add to that, every remote culture has its own way of doing things, its own sort of subculture in itself. I mean, like even emoji responses to things mean things in different companies and in different cultures. It's it, And that sounds so silly, but like that is a very real thing that happens. Yeah. So. Screening for people who can be like very intentional in the way that they speak and very, um, you know, uh, uh, open to other cultures and, you know, very um, just respectful with other people is something that we look for a lot. Um, additionally, um, one of the things that, that we always have to screen for is, again, the communication piece. I just think that that is so huge. I mean, yes, you do have to be independent. And part of that is documenting all your processes, every change you make in a way that anyone can understand, you know, um, you know, visual learners, you know, you'll find that um, the first couple months is, is sort of like a communicating at this job boot camp. <laughs> and then I guess the last piece is I find that Companies are still learning, especially younger companies, how to deliver training remotely. Um, you know, there's there's room for improvement in this space if anyone is feeling entrepreneurial. Uh, <laughs> but I definitely eager learners, definitely people who are interested in uh being self-starters when it comes to figuring things out asking questions looking it up um that is definitely a big unspoken rule of most remote work is um how you can manage that onboarding process because it is not for everyone and it is sort of a fail fast in my experience there are people for whom remote work is not a good fit and that's okay yeah absolutely i mean you, you can't force it really Kev, what do you think yeah, I mean, I'll 100% agree with everything both of them said. I mean, spot on. Uh, communication, a thousand percent is is top of mind. I'd even go kind of to drill into communication. I uh, I love um, the call up emoji use. You know, it's it's funny how those little details, um, the, just generally the attention to detail when you're working remotely really does matter, uh, just across the board, uh, because everything that you say is more often than not in remote environments, it's written, it's not actually vocalized. And so writing is actually the first thing I look for is, does someone know how to communicate clearly through writing? Because, you know, for example, we have 
uh, our entire team is spread out through across uh, Canada, the US, uh, India, Hong Kong, like we have people just everywhere. And so because of that, we're often missing each other in time zones, right? Um, so a lot of our communication happens not only asynchronously, but in bulk, whether it's through documentation, through emails, through Slack, no matter what the channel is or the medium, it's all written. And so those little details of I'm going to put an emoji here or I'm not actually do matter, or I'm going to communicate the idea this way versus asking a question. Actually, you know, all of those completely affect how the how the team works together, how the team thinks, how the team operates. And, and similarly, like kind of bringing it back to the job uh, hunting process, if you will, that's the mm -hmm. first thing I look for. You know, in our last hire, we had over 600 people uh, apply for the role. And that is, you know, incredibly tedious. But uh, the thing that we're, you know, so focused on and we're willing to take our time on is making sure that that person can communicate with us through that process effectively, because I'm not going to spend, I'm not going to do 600 interviews, right? right. So, right. Yeah. Uh, if I may add to that, actually, I think another piece of this puzzle is, um, as you pointed out, Kevin, like a lot of these are asynchronous where people have like very few core working hours. And you will find a lot of asynchronous companies have like a set of core hours, like one or two hours where they need some overlap from all employees or something so that, you know, a synchronous meeting is possible. But you'll find that like you don't just book like you better have something to say if you're eating up that very rarefied special crossover time but additionally it's like you need people who um can be um very thoughtful about what their needs might be so like for instance half of my team lives in europe or africa I'm over here on the eastern standard time zone in florida do not judge me and um <laughs> I will just say that like, I need to know right now what I'm gonna need by the time I start, you know, 12 hours from now tomorrow, because they need time to respond to it. Like we, you have to find a way to screen for people that are not just reactive. They're not are just swinging from mind to mind, which is why we prize people who can, again, be eager learners, like go yeah. into the, write good documentation for others or find the good documentation that was written for you. Or I don't know, Google it because nobody's answering your question for 12 hours. Yeah. So uh, I do think it's a big piece of the puzzle there. Yeah, and I'm just yeah. gonna double down really quick on that one on, on the resourcefulness because of that exact point. That is the thing that makes a great remote employee versus you could be a great employee in the office and if you are not resourceful, it is very, very difficult to work in a in a remote dynamic because again, you could just be sitting by yourself for half the day. And if you can't solve the problem, you can't wait for someone else to come solve the problem because yeah, there's no exactly. one there. <laughs> yeah. I will also say in an in-person office, like being like a minute or two late to a meeting is often not seen as like extremely rude. It's like, oh, these things happen or whatever. There was a line for the water cooler or whatever. Oh, um, right. When you have like two hours per day to talk to anyone live and somebody is late, you don't like that. People do not like that. They are screening oh, wow. you for every single thing you do. Like your etiquette um, needs to be on point. And I also think, and in some ways, this is um, an unfair privilege in certain kinds of personalities in certain cultures. You know, you're going to need to make relationships with people through this screen. So I do think larger personalities tend to win the day sometimes, uh, you know, so, you know, making sure that you bring uh, kind of a, a lot of energy. The example I used to give uh, coaching groups is if I were talking normally, it would be kind of here and this amount. But when I'm in a Zoom, it's up here, it's higher, it's more energy. But if I talk to you like this in person, you'd be like, I need to go lay down. This is really <laughs> Absolutely. That would be way you know, too um, Yeah, I just think uh, there's a lot of screening for that kind of thing. Yeah. And those soft skills, they're oh. examined with a, with a huge magnifier because people don't know you at all yeah. they don't see your body language they see this much you will learn to use your dinosaur hands and you speak with them in this box i think it's made me weird in real life you know <laughs> uh so um anyway that's something to think about that i think people often don't consider
Yeah, I mean, we're, I think we're all learning. I, I personally, I've been in Athena for a while now, and this is my second remote job. And it's, it's uh, you know, it kind of like learning to communicate and what's good and bad for other people, like all over again, because you're so used to, or, or we were so used to going to the office and what was good and not. It's completely different to what's good and not when you're a remote worker, I think. I don't know, <laughs> but that's that's my personal experience. But um, okay, uh, our chat is on fire. It's been on fire since we started. So I think it's time for the Q's and A's. Um, yeah, we've been taking notes of all of the questions, guys, that we're asking the chat sections and on YouTube also. Uh, remember that the ones that were already answered during the conversation, we're not gonna you know answer those again, but let me see, we can start with the first one. So Florencia Echeverria, do you hire marketers? Who is this? I don't know, Flor, if you can tell us who this question is for, or maybe some of you guys want to take it. Agus? Uh, yeah, so we, we just work in, in the AI space. So probably for Kevin, I'm sure he has plenty or, or Autumn, uh, I don't know if you, if you have in, in your uh, in microverse, but uh, I'm sure Kevin will have plenty of positions uh, for marketers. If you want okay. to take it. Yeah, I was going to say, we, we're not currently hiring, but on our site, if you work remotely, there are a lot of marketing jobs. So I would encourage you to go to We Work Remotely and take a look. Good. Now you know, Flo. <laughs> so this is from Ivan. With the increasing amount of funding for deep tech startups and increase in demand of AI talent, what is the biggest challenge uh, to match the talented companies? I can take that one if you want to say that. <laughs> Yeah, uh, so I think that's that's definitely why we launch Anyone AI, right? Because the, the number one barrier when it comes to AI adoption in, in companies in general, and, and to your point about you know the amount of funding the, in the recent years, um, mm -hmm. the number one barrier is the lack of people in general, but also with the right skills. Um, so what we offer at Anyone, it's a training. It's a, you have a four-month full-time training or a, a six-month part-time training where we give you all the tools you need uh, technically plus you know soft skills and interview uh, coaching so you can land uh, your job in AI. So that's that's really what we do. Um, main challenge, uh, I think it's probably you know a combination of all those things uh, but that's that's definitely what we do to to bridge that that problem. Awesome. Thanks. Uh, we have another, you guys, uh, Lourdes. Are all remote jobs English spoken? What's your experience, guys? I would say no. Um, I mean, there are a lot of, I think Kevin referred to this earlier. Um, there are a lot of all remote jobs that are within, you know, one area. You know, mm -hmm. uh, there are a lot of all remote jobs in Nigeria, for instance. Like there's a lot of all remote jobs in Mexico, you know, right. like, and I'm certain that you, well, I mean, Nigeria speaks English, but you know, <laughs> but you know, no, I'm I, certain there are like the local, um, like local ways of, of managing these things. I would say though, the majority of internationally distributed work is in English or French. Um, that that's, there's just a lot of startup um, capital and VC funding in those areas, and they have jobs to offer. And, you know, the languages of business are still, um, you know, uh, predominantly in English and French. Uh, I think also in, uh, in uh, remote work is not as common as you would think in Japan, for instance. Uh, uh, they tend to still have a more traditional uh, brick and mortar culture, but, uh, you know, they're, I think that these things are changing. And that's one of the things, for instance, at Microverse, the, one of the reasons we're trying devs all over the world is so that they can start their, you know, get the skills to, and the networks to start their own companies or to grow the companies in their existing areas and like bring that money back and stimulate their local community and their local markets. So, uh, but the, but yes, it is still predominantly uh, English, French. Um, and some Chinese, but those tend to be potted work. So that's awesome. Thanks, Autumn. So this one, this one goes to Austin. Um, it's from Zara. Are there any specific tips in terms of time management that you would like to uh, advise? Uh, I think when it comes to time management, there are a lot of you know 
techniques. Uh, it's really whatever works best for you. You know, some people will create their, you know, to-do list previous night to then focus on, you know, most important task at the beginning of the day when you are, you know, more, your, your mind is, uh, you know, fresh and then, you know, leave the rest for the days or meetings for the afternoon. There are definitely different setups. I think it really comes down to what works, you know, best for you. But, you know, we're here in a remote work session, so probably most important thing is uh, being able to separate your, you know, work from your life and find a good uh, life balance. It's really hard, uh, but, you know, definitely that's probably the number one challenge. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Okay. I'm also being reminded by my producers um, that you guys, we're possibly going to have another session about working in different time zones. So that's going to be cool also. Um, you can join us too. So we have another question. I think this one goes for Kevin, but anyone can can answer it. Um, it's Umar Khalid. If someone is working for an, for another firm and wants to start working with we remotely, would training be the same for everyone, or could it be fast tracked if the person is experienced in that field? Um, I I think so. Just in terms of. Um using we work remotely as as a tool to kind of find your your you know your next thing um in addition to possibly whatever you're doing um i would have absolutely say you know one as a starting point just in general for anyone here um sign up create an account um it'll allow you to start getting your curia job sent to you so you won't have to be kind of doing the search quite as much which as i'm sure everyone knows is a huge part of the, the work that goes into, you know, finding a job um, and landing a job. It's just that is, it's a very time consuming process. So mm -hmm. starting there will allow you to kind of start working through, you know, the preferences about different companies, different roles. It'll kind of start to inoculate you into the space a little bit more. And you'll, um, you know, whether it's passive or active in that job search, um, it'll actually allow you to start figuring out where your gaps are. So whether training is necessary, whether you need to start you know, kind of upscaling yourself and even just, you know, to the points we made earlier about, you know, writing and communication skills, it'll start helping you kind of, again, build those up over time. And, and that's, you know, in my opinion, the best kind of searching process um, is one that is continuous versus kind of thinking about like a hose where you turn it on or off and expecting it to go 100% all at once and then go back to zero. Because ultimately, you never know what opportunities are going to come. And, and it also means that if you're doing it that way, you're probably not continuing to think about your own career trajectory and growth continuously. So this, it kind of forces you to be thinking about what's next? Where could I be improving? Is this still fitting what I want? And so I would start there and just kind of, again, take it as an evolutionary process. Mm -hmm. Cool. Thanks. Thank you, Beth. Thank you for that. Um, so Ragaba, we have a question from Ragaba. Best way to get remote job for fresher? Is that is that a thing? I don't know. Yeah, you mean like an entry level person? Uh, perhaps? All right, right. Okay. Well, that is our specialty at Microverse. Uh, that you know, we essentially help people transition careers, and that is a specific kind of like career coaching and skill set. Um, but as a general rule, <laughs> persistence and patience and persuasion will get you any job. <laughs> uh, if you will wait long enough, if you sell yourself hard enough, and if you apply widely enough, yeah, I mean, you can make it happen. But I mean, it takes, that sounds easy, but the resilience it takes to hear no's and learn from a no and turn into yes um, is substantial. Um, it's also just a big part of any job search, but it's always a bigger part when you're trying to break into something new. So if you're transitioning into a new new line of work, if it's your first sort of professional job after perhaps a certificate program or a learning program of some kind, um, if you're transitioning, if it's your first remote job, your first startup job, I mean, there's all different ways to manage to transition, but frankly, it's the same skills are required. You have to find a way to stand out. Um, if you're not getting anything back from your resume, your resume, no offense, probably sucks. So you should probably edit it. Uh, you know, if you're failing the first round interview every time, there's probably something in your delivery that, um, you know, could be fixed, <laughs> could be edited. Um, you know, so I think it just takes a certain amount of patience and self-awareness. Um, it can happen for you. People make these transfers all the time. Um, but 
at the end of the day, it's always harder the first ones. I think Kevin even mentioned that earlier. Like it's harder to get your first remote job even, but then after that, it's like a valuable skill set. Um, you know, there's a certain universe for people who were remote before COVID are like rock stars in the remote community. Right. I'm one of them, no big deal. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I think that it's just part of the kind of difficulties of getting any job. They're just greater at the beginning. And, and that's awesome. And Autumn, I think you already answered this in the chat, but maybe you want to expand a little bit. Um, Dudu says uh, they have a friend who works at Microverse and he had to do like five interviews. Is that like, it's like that for everyone when you're applying for a job in Microverse? At, at Microverse? Yeah. At Microverse. <laughs> uh, yeah, we love an interview at Microverse. Um, <laughs> Good. We really do. One of those interviews, I guess, is asynchronous. It's like a take home, but okay. yeah, it's a lot. Um, I actually had to do an extra round on mine. Um, so I, I did six. Uh, oh, we love okay. the interview. I will say that there's always stuff <laughs> like that because um, our hiring process can go long. Um, but at the same time, um, it costs a lot of money to onboard people. And then if they don't work out right. like completely, I mean, if you're a Series A startup, like you just have no business making those mistakes. Uh, so we, I do imagine as we get our Series B or Series C or Series D that we will probably relax a little. But no, my girls will put you through your paces. We will accept nothing but your best and your endurance. That's good. <laughs> All right, next question, guys. Uh, this is from Juan. Any tips to prepare yourself for your first remote interview? I was Kev. Anybody want to answer that? Kev, you want to go, go ahead. Okay, I'll, I'll just drop in. I mean, the short answer is prepare. Um, you know, practice <laughs> if you can in advance. Just you know, get on get on a Zoom call with someone you know who can run through some interview questions, like even as a baseline prep the things that Autumn was talking about, you know, your energy, um, just you, your focus, you have all the same prepared answers kind of that you would want to have in there and just, and kind of be ready to, you know, really be engaging. Um, and, and possibly I would even, you know, go as far as to say, be kind of ready to drive some of the conversation um, because depending on the, the person you're interviewing with, they may be looking for you to do that. So be, again, be sort of ready to, to not only answer things, but possibly, um, you know, run the conversation and kind of own more of the space in the, you know, quote unquote room there. Right. Yeah. Uh, and I suppose I would add to that, that like, this would be true of any interview, but I, I think remote interviews amplify it. Like you need to go look at everything that was actually on that job description and become an expert overnight in every single piece of it. Like if they mention some tool you don't know, well, guess good luck, good good news. You're one Google away from knowing about that tool and watching 15 YouTube videos. Like, you know, uh, and I think that, you know, you can show that you're an eager learner. You can show, you can say like, I've actually never worked with, I don't know, Airtable, but I watched a couple of videos last night and I thought it was it's similar to, X thing that we used at my company. You know, people very much notice if you are the kind of person that can, I don't know, close read a document without talking to anyone and then do research and then come back with intelligent things to say, because that is literally what we were describing is what it's like working in a remote office. Like, like, I document I document something, you read it, you think about it, answer whatever questions you don't need me for so that you can get to the level of questions you need me to answer tomorrow. If you're lucky. I'm busy nice. lucky. Uh, yeah. So, um, yeah. One, one more <laughs> addition to that, if may I uh, add yeah, something? So, yeah, research, like like Autumn say, uh, research research the company and the interviewer. And if you and prepare questions, uh, have you know questions prepared for the interview. If you manage to have a one on one conversation with the interviewer, it's very likely you you did a very good interview. It's not just about them learning about you; it's about you also learning about the job and making sure you're a good fit for them. So that's something we always tell our, our fellows as well. 
Yeah, that's awesome. This, this one, this next one is for you um, as well, Austin. Uh, this is from Juan Manuel. After anyone AI cohort, can I apply for jobs in Europe? I'm planning to move to Europe. Yeah, definitely. We so we basically connect uh, developers from LATAM to global positions. So definitely, Europe is a uh, is a target for us. Yes. Awesome. So next question, and I apologize in advance because I don't know how to pronounce your name, but I think it's it could be Sive. I'm sorry. Um, oh, I actually that was that was the last question. Sorry, it wasn't Juan Manuel, but Umer, who's been like putting his hand hand up for a while now, he is saying, I've been working with US-based companies for eight plus years in sales, but I want to start content writing and et cetera. What advice would you give me in accordance with that? If you are ever applying to a job ever that would potentially benefit from a portfolio, you should probably have a portfolio. <laughs> so like, okay. if you want to do content writing, it, well, <laughs> congratulations, blogs are free. Uh, and then start sharing that content on your blog and on your LinkedIn and follow people who, you know, are content writers and, you know, don't be afraid to ask them questions about what made them go into the industry. People love talking about themselves, ask them questions about themselves. You know, uh, if you want to be like a web developer, then you should probably have a portfolio of web developing things that you have done, you know? So like, it's a lot easier in some cases because you can kind of submit with samples. And also when they look at your LinkedIn or whatever, they can see you using those skills. Uh, you know, uh, so there's a lot that you can do to kind of show that you have the skills that they're looking for. Uh, and then I would just do a pass over your resume to point out every single time you've ever written anything in your sales job. You know, uh, you know, really tease out those transferable skills that you hope to, you know, make a bridge with in your next job. Okay. Yeah, just yeah. maybe just to, to add to that really quickly. Um, I think those are all spot on. You know, a lot of this is kind of that self-starter quality of just, you know, don't don't wait for permission to go write content or whatever, you know, web, even as a web developer, right? If you want to go be a web developer, um, go start learning those, uh, you know, skills on your own. And, and even if you're still new in it, right? If it's sort of, if you feel like you're at the entry level, that's okay. Most of, you know, I and, and you know, Autumn and Augustine, you could kind of tell me if you disagree here, but... I think a lot of what people are looking for, just generally, not just in remote work, but really is more around the kind of the thought process and, and your ability to to break down a problem into smaller problems and to and to tackle it and to ask good questions. It's not do you have the answers? It's how do you think about getting to the answer and and can you do that? You know, in a way that's productive, whether that's folding on your own, whether that's in collaboration or in research. And so, you know, if you want to go write content, for example, as, you know, the path you want to be on, not only go start, but also, you know, even document the, the process of where you are and just be, as kind of Autumn alluded to earlier, be transparent about where you are in, in your knowledge of that. Like, you know, hey, I've, you know, I've written, you know, 50 different articles, um, you know, some of them have been published and like, here's some of the other ones I'm working on. Here's the challenges I'm having, you know. I can tell you that, especially for design, for example, that's often the biggest barrier that people hear is like, well, I don't have a design portfolio yet. You know, I just just graduated. I just started getting into it. How do I build that up? Like, you can come up with your own prompts. You can decide, I want to design this, you know, a website like this, or I want to redesign someone else's thing. Just, you know, kind of take that, that leap. And as long as you're showing that, again, you can go solve those problems and, and have a, a process that you're learning and growing through, people will see that as way more important than how big is your portfolio and, and how, you know, how long have you been doing this, especially if it's for the right job at the right level. Yeah, I completely agree with that. Hard skills, like you need to code in Ruby or something, will get you in the room for a job interview, but soft skills will always get you that job. Like that is, that is what culture fits are nothing but a soft skills uh, like gauntlet that you have to go through 
Uh, you know, like, uh, does this person ask a question? Do they do their research? Are they polite, upbeat? Do they have a problem solving capability? All those things are soft skills. Uh, do not neglect your soft skills. <laughs> uh, hard skills are like, yeah, don't apply at a job if you don't know how to code in the language. The job You wouldn't want that job. What are you going to do when you get there? What are you going to do when you're in the Java job and you don't code in Java? Like, yeah. nothing. You're going to do nothing. <laughs> You're going to quit. <laughs> That's what you're going to do. So, yeah, I mean, but you can always, always, always promote your soft skills in every piece. If it's a remote job, like in between emails, send a thank you with like a really well-written letter or like a Loom video of you like thanking them personally so that they can see you know how to make connections with people when you never have met them. You know, like just little things like that. The little touches still set you apart. Sending an email Following up on one of the things that we talked about, instead of just thanking me, will continue to impress me until the day I die, you know? And I interview career coaches. They know every trick in the book. Right. It's, in, it's incredible. So I don't know, soft skills are always the way to win the day. That's awesome. Thank you so much, guys. Um, guys, we're running out of time. We only have one minute left. I know we have so many more questions that uh, I'm so sorry we couldn't answer to you because uh we ran out of time but um i just want to thank you guys thank you so much uh obviously we'd love to keep them going but you know time's up um some of these questions were not answered but uh, they're connected you know to uh like i said before to topics uh such as i don't know uh like the ones we had before from the different time zones and those are going to go for the, our next sessions so um, stay tuned because you will find out when we have our next uh, session. Um, stay, also stay tuned for our social media and newsletters because we'll post the date and, and everything you need to know about Athena and, and our upcoming sessions are going to be there. Thanks a lot, uh, everyone, for joining us today. Thanks, Kevin. Thank you so much. Autumn, Althine, for being our speakers and... Guys, this goes to our audience. Remember, you can find them on uh, Kevin Kirkpatrick on LinkedIn. Uh, my, with, you know, we work remotely also on LinkedIn. Then we have Autumn Hoffman with Microverse and Althine Gavarzassi, Anyone AI. And that's it for today. Guys, thank you so, so, so much and have an amazing day. And I'll see you next time. Thank you. Thank you all so much. I hope you all Thanks, miss everyone. you successes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully. Bye guys. Thank you.